Hello, you're watching Up New X, and today let's talk about the drama. 我可能遇到了救星 Hi. Venus. This is a 24 episode contemporary drama that's airing on the web platform Youku. And as I'm making this video, I've already watched the first 14 episodes. It is directed by Wang Zheng, written by Wang Xiongcheng. It's led by Liang Jie and Zeng Shunxi. The interesting thing about this drama is the writer Wang Xiongcheng is either the sole writer or the collaborate writer of a couple of very similar projects that have happened in recent years. Further is. Back in time would be the drama "Find Yourself." 下一站是幸福 led by Song Weilong and Song Qian. Then it was the drama "Go Ahead." 以家人之名 led by Tan Songyun, Zhang Xincheng, Song Weilong. Then you have the drama "Become Your That Day," led by Liang Jie and Zhang Xincheng. See like how many people are reused in this whole mixture. Then next year on Mango Television 2023, the drama "To Your Feng" the Di Fang, led by Liu Yifei and Li Xian, is also written by this guy. As for High Venus, this drama was shot from the end of October last year to very beginning of January this year. And I'll give you my rating at this point, then a brief introduction to the story. And then let's look at the details. So far, I'm actually surprisingly happy about the quality of this drama. I really got very entertained, and I think at the end of the year, where overall atmosphere is more festival heavy, and you want to look at something that's happier, this is the perfect drama. I give it a two gold mine. Maybe a little bit inflation in that. As long as it keeps to the current quality, it probably will go smoothly to the end as a two gold mine. Then let me talk about briefly what the story is. The drama starts with the encounter of a male lead and female lead under very unusual circumstances. She is a pediatrician who works at a very high end private hospital because of a program that this hospital has with the local countryside remote place clinics. They send. And doctors there to help the locals, and they take turns. But because she didn't do very well with the boss, the boss kicked her there and then kept her there and not calling her back to the hospital. Male lead character shows up in this countryside because he's driving by and he runs into a heavy rain and landslide and couldn't get out and got mistaken as a goat thief of the female leads. Goat, because she lives in countryside and they have goats and chickens in their place. And because of a series of misunderstandings, she thought of him as a thief and a liar and somebody who sells fake tincture, like the medical alcohol, to cheat the elderly population of the countryside out of their money. So she's very hostile toward him. They can't go anywhere because the road is blocked by landslide. So. They had to live together in a clinic for a couple of days. Afterwards, finally, the guy managed to leave the place, and she immediately gets a call from her hospital calling her back. When she returned, she realized he really first wasn't a thief and selling fake alcohol. <laughs> Second, he's actually the new president. Now let's talk about what is great about this drama and what may make it worth watching for you. Positive side number one: very light. Toned happy drama festival season end of the year. If you wanna have something that's just happy, no amount of pain and stress. This is the drama number two. If you've previously watched Find Yourself, Day of Becoming You, Go Ahead, and overall you like that type of drama and the look of it, the editing style, then you're gonna like this one. Particularly if you've watched. The day of becoming you. That one, if you liked this one, you're gonna like more because this one turn it up a notch. It really goes crazy <laughs> with sound design and music. If you like this type of overdone but really funny sound effect, you're gonna like this drama. If you don't like it, oh well, this this one is worse than the day of becoming you. Okay, so this may be a positive or a negative, totally depending on what kind of、uh, audience. You are personally, it's a little bit too much for me. Then again, I can accept it because for the other good things about this drama, I can't ignore the little bit annoyance I get from the overdone sound effect. Then the third thing that I really enjoyed about this drama is the pairing between Zeng Shunxi and Liang Jie. They have previously acted in a pair drama called Yan Gui Xi Chongyue. I watched like one episode and couldn't stand that drama, so I didn't continue. To me, I would just still consider this to be my first drama of them pairing up. As the leading couple, so far it worked really well, and I think a contemporary drama with them both acting as normal humans in a very realistic setting with their own voice. 
just works much better than the parent drama. I would consider Liang Jie and Zheng Shunxi's pairing in this drama as a really sitting at the perfect comfortable place couple between the more beautiful idolized romantic story world in drama land and the more realistic can happen in our life couple story. It's likely in your life if you know enough people you're gonna see more glamorous couples, taller, <laughs> more supermodel looking, more like shockingly looking and rich and super pretty people. It's likely that everybody would know one or two couple in their own life that are actually more glamorous than this screen pairing. By no means of saying they're not like star-like, okay? <laughs> Just feels really comfortable and nice. I always liked Liang Jie a lot. Easy for audiences to empathize and actually becoming her, taking her perspective and looking at things. And she has always worked really well with her opposite actor, whoever that guy is, Xing Zhaolin, Zheng Shunxi, or Zhang Xincheng. And then Zheng Shunxi, my opinion about him is he looks way too cute to be a very traditional traditionally uh, regarded male lead uh, actor who is chiseled featured and very masculine looking and he's got like baby doe huge eyes and very soft facial features in terms of the lines are always circular on his face often way too cute and it's hard to take him very seriously but when he speaks Cantonese he's a totally different person than when he speaks Mandarin this drama he acts in his own voice and Mandarin so he's often appearing to me still a little bit too cute. But the moment he switches to Cantonese when he was in other dramas I've watched, the sharpness, that edge, the masculine and that quality immediately comes up. My private hope is for him in the future to do more dramas where he is completely speaking Cantonese and he gets so much sexier <laughs> when he does that. For this drama, it's really perfect that both of them are not the type of super glamorous celebrity. So that when they play a couple like this, even though some of the settings in the drama is still quite unrealistic and idealized, somehow it makes it more believable. The final point is the story itself. If you remember when I first made my weekly video talking about this drama as it was a uh, promoting and about to air, putting out its first trailer, I was very worried. I thought it's gonna be another cliche, crappy drama of the CEO and the girl story, particularly it's in the hospital of a guy who's so young and becoming the president. Well, once I start to watch a drama, uh, it's actually not really what I thought it would be. It's not a medical drama. It doesn't have anything to do with the actual medical practices. It doesn't even have, I think, one shot of the hospital wards and any patients at all. It is to do with the background story, the administration things. I think the writer is really clever to avoid anything that's to do with any specific medical practices, patients, cases, any of that. The drama is really the romantic relationship between two people who just happen to be a new president of a hospital and a pediatrician. I also highly appreciate that this drama, when it has a type of second male lead and second female lead, they are the ideal type of second leads you want. Number one is they don't take too much screen time away from the main couple. They hardly really show up, but when they show up, they are in themselves really interesting and funny. They help the main plot, they got integrated with the main couple very well, and on their <laughs> self, this particular relationship between the female leads good girlfriend, her roommate, and the male lead's assistant is in itself, you can imagine a whole different romantic drama. Then for the story as it is at the core a romantic story between the male lead and the female lead character, I very much appreciate how this drama takes apart and kind of reconstruct a version of the classic cliche story of the CEO and the much less well-doing girl in the 21st century when both people are well-educated, reasonable, respecting each other's boundary adults. If you've previously watched this writer's other story, such as Find Yourself, Day of Becoming You, go ahead. This drama is the upgraded version, in my opinion, where they take out most of the super dog blood type of plot and setup of those dramas that often gets those dramas complained about. Both characters are written as such lovely, reasonable, normal, people with logical mind and they are both at core really good people but in very different ways or they are both realistically enough that you can believe that they are real 
in this world with their setup, but then they can do what they do in the drama. For example, the female lead is the classic not well doing family background girl. She lost her father when she was very young and her mother remarried and had another child with another man. So she's very detached from her original family. And although she works very hard and she's very capable, at the core, she has a level of insecurity and she's not so confident in herself. But then she has managed to bring herself to the current place place where she's confident enough. And she only shows her doubt to a very close confidant, like her good friend. And she's constantly being torn between these two parts where she tries to be more confident, but then <laughs> she still has that insecurity problem. And when it comes to having a relationship with a guy who is clearly social, money, everything wise much higher than her, she would suffer at that insecurity problem, but also not over the top getting affected by it. And that's a really subtle place for a character to be sitting at. And the drama does a really good job of depicting what goes on in her head and how it affects how she deals with this guy. The same thing happens with the male character where he is set up as the <laughs> traditional CEO character. He is rich <laughs> from birth. He is clever, very capable at doing his professional job and not in any way actually a spoiled brat, <laughs> like a lot of poorly written dramas with this type of characters would do. At the same time, he has the virtue of being sensitive, understanding that realistically there is a difference between me and the girl I like. So he's very acute at respecting her and not overdoing things. But at certain milestone point when he needs to push it and stand his ground, he would do it. So this is like the ideal gentleman that you can have <laughs> with that kind of setup. I'd say what we hope we can see in the archetypical characters of the drama has them set up. Whether you're from that level of family or that level of family, different social planes and status, at the core, you're a good person. You understand how to deal with other people and you respect them. You also have the courage to break through your own whatever boundary you have. It's so much better than a lot of other crappy stuff, basically. And I can't really pick out a significantly worth talking about negative thing about the drama. I'd say the only superficial negative thing is if you don't like the super noisy sound effect and music that's constantly going on. The characters sort of in their head, the sound effect is like they're thinking. Holy shit, what am I gonna do? Oh, okay, I'm frozen. Ah, oh, crap, this is embarrassing. So all of those moments in this drama when a character has that in their head, you're gonna hear the perfect but annoying sound effect that tells you what to think. I think that's a most maybe offensive thing for people who don't like this type of styling. I can deal with it, but in an ideal world, I would want them to tune down that a lot. Really, that's the only thing that I think I have a problem with. And I think Yoku is lucky to have this drama at the end of this year because they're putting out a lot of other dramas right now. I don't know about the other ones, whether they're gonna do as well or whether they're gonna get as positive a review from me, but this one at least kind of saved Yoku's impression a little bit at the end of 2022. I've said everything I wanna say about this drama. So if you like Liangjie, like Zeng Shunxi, you want a happy, relaxed, contemporary romantic drama. In many ways are much better than a lot of other contemporary romantic dramas from Chinese drama land. This is the one you should be picking. I hope you all have a good time watching this drama. Enjoying it at the end of this year 2022. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.